This Mac Mini costs just $25. Is it worth it? Can you even use it in 2018? So before we get started, I want to thank Zero N9 for sponsoring this video. They're a global digital game store that offers a wide variety of softwares, popular online games, Xbox and PlayStation gift cards, and more. Today they're promoting their Office 2016 Professional and Windows 10 Professional keys. More information is in the description, and I also have a discount code that you can use on their website, also in the description. So behind me is a 2005 Mac Mini. and these old fellas are dirt cheap nowadays. The Mac Mini is Apple's cheapest new computer and has been for many years. As such, you can find some great deals on older devices, such as my model, the original, which can be had on sites such as eBay for just 25 bucks. However, don't let this low price tag fool you. This machine is severely limited, as you might expect. To start, let's talk specs. My machine is running a 1.25 GHz single core PowerPC G4 processor with 256 MB of RAM. For storage we have a 40 GB mechanical hard drive with the original OS X 10.3 Panther installed. And our graphics are handled by an ATI Radeon 9200 chip with 32 megabytes of VRAM. Obviously these specs aren't too special by today's standards. In fact, this is by far the lowest Power Mac I've ever reviewed on this channel, and I've looked at a lot of older Macs. This was even one of the lowest end Macs when it was brand spanking new. When this model was introduced, it was revolutionarily inexpensive. Never before was it possible to get into a new Macintosh for just $500. In fact, the Mac Mini is still the cheapest way to get into the Mac ecosystem 13 years later. Unlike many of the Macs that I've shown on this channel before, I'm actually the original owner of this Mac Mini. My family bought this thing new in 2005 and we used it all the way up until 2009 so this thing pretty much saw me through most of elementary school. This computer is completely stock. It has its original hard drive with all its original data on it, such as the games I would play on it. Though sadly, my free trial for Mystery Mahjong has long expired. These older Mac Minis use single-core PowerPC processors, which immediately dates them and prevents them from running newer operating systems and programs. However, this little fella still has a few tricks up its sleeve. Because we're still running 10.3 Panther, this Mac has Classic on it, which essentially runs an emulator for Mac OS 9. So we can run some retro programs on this machine. Additionally, this fella can still run older versions of Microsoft Word, so word processing is definitely possible. This machine is certainly capable of running older versions of the Adobe Creative Suite, though I don't have any on hand, and it even has iMovie HD, which is one of the best versions of iMovie ever. Really, I have to pause here because iMovie HD was just such a great version of iMovie. That's the first video editing program that I ever used, and really it was not matched by succeeding versions of iMovie. In fact, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I have heard that iMovie HD was so good and so ahead of its time that Apple actually made it worse with iLife 08. Is that what came next? Because they wanted people to step up and buy Final Cut Pro if they wanted some real professional video tools. But this machine means a lot more to me than the $25 that it's worth. This was my first experience with a Mac and it's amazing to think how much of my family's early lives were contained on this tiny 40 gigabyte hard drive on this wimpy single core machine with 256 megabytes of RAM. Now of course there are a few drawbacks to this machine. The first of which is that they tend to run hot. Because of the small form factor, the ATI Radeon graphics run really really hot. There just isn't enough room for cooling. 
So a machine like this really doesn't do much if you push it beyond web browsing or simple basic programs. Additionally, I did have a little bit of trouble with video out. There is only one way to output video and it's through the DVI, or in my case, an adapter from DVI to VGA because I could not get DVI to work with my normal monitor. I don't know why that happened, but the problems didn't end there because once I connected to this crappy old monitor with VGA, I found that I could only run at 1600 by 900 even though this monitor is 1080p. For some reason, when I selected 1080p, the entire screen was shifted off to the right and it was pretty much unusable. But aside from those problems, which I personally attribute to this being a 13-year-old budget Macintosh, let's talk about the design. It's a classic design, and in my opinion, it still looks decently good to this day. Granted, there's not too much going on here. The design is mainly a square aluminum frame with a plastic top, of course bearing the coveted Apple logo. The bottom of this computer is a rubber substance which will keep it mounted on the desk, and it is vented along all sides of the bottom case. Interestingly enough, this machine is asleep. Interestingly enough, this machine doesn't have any screws on the exterior. In order to get inside this device, you have to pry off that bottom case. Along the back, we find our meager selection of ports, including just one single video output. And that's pretty much it for the exterior of this device. One thing to note is this Mac Mini still has a CD drive, even though it's very, very small. This is something that the current generation Mac Minis do not have, but this device is still rocking its CD drive, so we could use it, if nothing else, as a very inexpensive DVD player, if you still watch DVDs. The Mac Mini, along with the iMac, is one of the few PowerPC Macs whose names lived on past the great Intel switchover of 06 albeit with completely different internals. So, as amazingly cheap as my machine is, it's really not worth it for shoppers who want to gain access to the modern Mac ecosystem on a budget. I've said it before and I'll say it again. For users trying to buy a solid, semi-long-term Mac on a budget, it's best to stay away from anything that doesn't have a Core 2 Duo or later. These older Core Duo and PowerPC machines are long outdated and rather useless under macOS. While more tech-savvy viewers will be quick to point out that with a few clever upgrades and crafty installations of certain Linux flavors or older Mac operating systems, this machine can be resurrected and used for semi-modern tasks. This is something that can be out of reach for standard users. Personally, I would recommend going with a 2009 or later Mac Mini if you're looking for a budget Mac. 2009s can be had for very little money, probably around $100 if you do your hunting, and they can still run as recently as El Capitan or even later if you have patchers. So these devices are still usable in 2018, which is more than can be said for my old 2005 little fella. The Mac Mini is also a subject of contention in 2018. It hasn't been refreshed in four years now, which leaves a lot of fans of this budget device wondering if Apple has abandoned them. Don't despair, however. The Mac Mini, much like the MacBook Air, still sells decently well despite its lack of updates because it appeals to budget-conscious buyers. So, I personally believe that at some point, probably this year, we'll see, at the very least, upgraded processors, if not a completely new design. Although, I do have to say, I don't think it will be a brand new design because really the Mac Mini is just a little square puck that sits on your desk so there's really no need to redesign it. Although personally, now that I think about it, a Space Gray Mac Mini would be pretty sick. So should you buy my original Mac Mini in 2018? Uh, no, no, no. If you're an average consumer who's looking for a device that they can use every day, a machine like this is pretty much useless to you. For most people, I would definitely recommend going for a 2009 or later. After all, these machines are cheap to begin with, so going for something that's 9 years old is going to be worth the extra, like, $75 that you have to spend. I mean, heck, this thing doesn't even have 
Wi-Fi. You gotta use either Ethernet or or a modem. That says a lot. Well, thank you guys for watching. That'll do it for today's video. If you liked, please make sure to leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. And of course, please consider joining my subreddit, where we can help you out if you're looking to buying or flipping a used Mac. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.